All righty. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are doing well. I have the man, the myth, the guy that is looking at just a choppy market as I am, but managing through it way better than I am. Mike Jorp, Prosper Trader. Mike, have you been? What do you think so far today? Yeah, today, uh, I'm, I think it's a little bit um, more of a, of a reversal than I was quite frankly expecting. But I didn't really understand other than with the lack of anything else to do for them to take the pre-market news with with the UK and some of the Fed speak that's come out there that well, one, <clears throat> the Fed speak, I didn't understand, you know, they have done nothing but saying, hey, listen, we're just doing what we're going to do. And if you don't have that expectation priced into your model or your expectations, I don't know what you're listening for other than and Brainerd did have some uh, a little bit more of, of dovish stuff, but the people that, you know, on whole, it really isn't that, that, that big of a deal. So, you know, UK obviously has some issues really kind of after the European markets closes, when we kind of took our, our stuff up, it could have been a number of uh, two things is what I saw for the move from the very, very sideways movement up until about uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock central um, up to where we are presently was one, uh, Freddie Mac came out with something saying that they, so I'm paraphrasing here, but basically that, uh, well, interest rates have come down by, you know, the biggest chunk that it has in, in quite a while. And they think that inflation may have topped out. Now, what whatever they're, you know, it, whatever you want to put into Freddie Mac, as far as expectations on inflation, they're, they're a little bit biased um, in, in a, in a hot market. And uh, so we had that. And then, and then, you know, kind of coincidentally Pelosi announced that, that uh, she was going to be speaking at that time. And I think everybody knows what that meant uh, that, and, but that wasn't much of a surprise. So I think it was just kind of where we've seen on these kind of softish bearish days, early on is that you just have this accumulation coming in with everybody that wants to sell and then just taking it higher. And that's what we're seeing here. And we're just kind of holding right here through the lunch hour. Now it'll be telling what happens as we roll closer to one o'clock central after the Chicago lunch is done and to see if they are going to take this the next step higher, or if we're just going to kind of bleed back off into, let's just say the 392 area for the, for the spy. That's, that's been it today. Um, you know, as far, you know, you and I, uh, pre going on here, we talked about position sizing and I know some people and some people in my room say, you know, Mike, on these slow days, I increase my size because it's not moving as much. Um, I take the exact opposite approach. Uh, and, well, I never go over a certain limit. You know, if, if, I, I like to compartmentalize and silo my trades that if it's so great, well, then, you know, buy it in, get to your target profit, get out and then get back in if it's so great. But, you know, discipline, same thing when things aren't working for you, you have your stops, whatever level that is, and you're out. And if it's so great, well, then reload as opposed to, well, I'm just going to do twice or three times as much as I normally do because I need to pull out money every day somehow. Remember, it's not about you know, if you're looking at your P&L, you know, by the hour, or by the, you know, even by the day, I think you're going to get yourself into real trouble. I know that there are people that have, you know, a certain nut that they want to make every day. And I don't think that that is the way to look at things. You want to look at your returns over at the very least a week. And really, I don't look at mine other than monthly. The same, you know, I, when people tell me, hey, I need to make this amount of money. Well, if you have to put the word need and this yeah. amount of money, you're, you're getting into this with the wrong logic to begin with. And yeah. it almost seems that's kind of what the Fed is doing. We need to have the markets and the, and the broader economy going here. So we're going to jump in with all types of Hollywood Fed talk. And it bothers me, but I, I am kind of surprised on a day when we've had this much Fed talk, we're essentially up 1% from the open there. From, and, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and that's kind of thing rallying back to where we were not even really rallying. Uh, I, I'm trying to make sure I use the right terms here because a rally is three, five, 10%. Right now, it's just, 
a nice family get together pushing yeah. us up slightly here. I'm curious, though, I got to agree that after that Chicago lunch hour, uh, you think we're going to have a fade off here in the day because the amount of volume we saw in the beginning of the day was null at best. And yeah. then we got that little bit of a jump. So it almost seems that we're wound up, but with so many people splashing in this pool, is there any more water left to keep us moving? Uh, well, the way that I, I, the way that I look at it and, you know, we can take spy or Q, but I'll look at Q because that was the one that seemed to be driving they, by yesterday afternoon, they were moving in lockstep. There was a little bit of, of play in between the two early on in the day, but they were moving on with lockstep and, and we, we just kept on banging off of this, like right now, which is at 285 level. Maybe it's, it's actually just a little bit less than that in queues. Uh, we're late in the day. They kept on trying to hit it and it was just a brick wall. And you could just tell that we were going to rally into the close because they couldn't take it any lower. They were just accumulating this stuff and took it higher. Now we came off overnight for, you know, I guess some decent reasons. And now we are solidly above that same level again in queues and now not taking that next step up higher, but it seems like this just looks like yesterday afternoon to me right now. This is exactly what it looked like, except we have a little bit of price action be below us where we didn't yesterday. I like it. I like it. You know, and that's so um, I, I, I told my, my folks that, you know, don't expect a breakout to the upside, at least until one o'clock. We may see, we've seen a slight, and I mean a very, very slight bleed off over the last half an hour or so. Uh, I don't think anybody's making money doing it, um, uh, but uh, we'll see at one o'clock if they want to test this 285 level in queues. If that holds, then, you know, then I think that we're, we're looking, you know, above, but I, we, you know, we really don't have a whole lot in this until almost 295 as far as resistance in the queues. I don't think we're going too far either way. And, you know, I just hope we have some, some back and forth trade, but you know, yesterday was just, I mean, it was, it was really, really tight as far as a range in spy. I hadn't seen a range like that. And, you know, it seems like forever, but it was, but we were just really, really tight and it was hard to make money, especially from the option side being long or short. Cause you were, we were trading for nickels all day. I mean, that, which is fine. It's good practice, but, um, but it, 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 this is not dynamic trade. And, you know, if you, if you, if you have multiple things up on your thing, it, we are up ticking and down ticking in all of your major components, not just to mention spy and Q that are up ticking and down ticking, like literally exactly how we're looking at it. So it, it's a, it's a market that is just, found its stasis and uh are we going to go higher or are we going to go lower so how do you feel about the dixie here finally getting back above that 107 and kind of dancing in that area now do you think as we get into this holiday season we're going to see a little bit more deflation here in the dollar so that we can get more foreign products over for the holiday season or what, what are your thoughts here on that yeah let me recalibrate here because i use uup mm -hmm. um and and there's I mean, it measures the same thing, and I, I just, given the platform that I use, I get uh, better volume data, uh, I get any volume data on UUP, but, uh, but yeah, so, so early on in, in the day, we had, we had rallied pretty, pretty well after, well, pre-market, you know, certainly because of, of UK, we rallied from that 106 level all the way up to where they put in that high 107.20 ish 107 a little bit higher mm -hmm. and now we're all the way back down to 106.75 so we got some more room today to the downside that's definitely leading us uh you know or, or lending a a bullish tone to what we're seeing here uh that has been kind of as far as outside indicators uh what I, I use, I use the VIX and the dollar, and that's really what we've been trading. And actually, the dollar has been a, a better indicator because the VIX just isn't moving a whole heck of a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it it it, uh, it actually was up this morning. Thank goodness we we are we are long, we um, I am long VIX, and we we adjusted out of that to basically put on almost a free trade in VIX to give us some downside protection. But uh, the dollar is definitely leading things. That that is what everybody 
is is keying on and just it, just because the VIX just isn't moving all that much and it's but it, it, it's you know, looking at it's a pretty good lockstep with the dollar too so that those two things you're not seeing a whole lot of divergence there but uh, we're just in a holding pattern for right now yeah, uh, I can agree with the same thing definitely not a time to try and put on two three and four times normal trading size no no uh, you know and I never go above I only go I only go below you know I have I have my set allocation which I don't care how great I feel a trade is. I don't go above that. You know, the market doesn't care what I feel or, you know, like folks are always asking me, Mike, you know, on a scale of one to 10, what do you think about this one? Well, I would hope that I feel like they're all a 10 and I, and being human, of course, that they're not. But even if I thought something was a 10, well, maybe I'm just wrong. And so, you know, to, to continue to strive for consistency in your, in your, trades there's enough volatility in the other inputs that are in your trade your feelings should figure nothing into it so um you know oh i'm really confident on this one well who cares you know including you who cares yeah. uh your feelings you know just and and if things are choppy and you're finding that in general that you are you're making the right calls but not making a bunch of money pull back on your allocation trade when you know trade aggressively when it makes sense to do so not when you're like wow you know i'm 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 you know either i'm losing a lot so i gotta up my positions to make that money back which is well you clearly have no idea what's going on today so let's lose double uh, that doesn't make any sense just you, you know keep your head about it and don't i i make it a point and to to teach this too is don't look at your p what well i should say when once you are a comfortable trader. I don't want to say an accomplished trader. A comfortable trader. Don't bother looking at your PL uh, during the day, because all that's going to do is that's going to put money into your risk decisions. Risk decisions are based on the data that's in front of you, not how much money you are up or down on the day. I actually had a, uh, an employer of mine who actually came over and put one of those sticky notes on top of my PL, so I couldn't watch it during the day. Cause he's like, why the hell are you sitting there watching that thing? And I was like, well, you know, I wanna know where we are. He goes, what do you care? He goes, it's not your money. And so, you know, I was, I was a much younger trader then. He goes, it's not your money. He's like, I'll tell you when to stop or when to start. He says, it's my money. I'm paying you to trade, not to watch my PL." So. You got a point. I, I always tell people to convert it to percentages. If you're going to want at least convert it to percentages, that way, you know, am I up 1%, 2%? That way you don't have that notional value stuck in your head because at the end of the day, five grand is five grand, you know, right. it's a down payment on a lot of stuff. So awesome. Yep. Awesome. So Mike, if people want to learn more and have a conversation with you in the trading rooms, where can they get a hold of you? Yeah, um, prospertrading.com, and actually, uh, uh, three of our three of our uh, instructors, our CEO Scott Bauer, our stock trader Charlie Moon, and myself, we're all doing a webinar tonight. So okay. if you go to our website, I'm sure somewhere, if we're smart, <laughs> I haven't gone and checked, but there would be a link so you can join us tonight. That's uh, that's at seven o'clock central, so eight o'clock Eastern. You'll have uh, three of the main instructors here at Prosper. Uh, you know, and we'll be there and we, of course we have a presentation, but we'll all be there for Q and A and, uh, that would be a great way to figure out, you know, who we are, what we do and our approach and things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mike, you can toss me that link. I'll throw it in the uh, scout pit there for the traders. And, uh, other than that, I want to say thank you for dropping yep. some great analysis on that and reassuring people that uh, it's about the process, not the P&L. But other than that, man, you have a great weekend and we'll see you on the next one. All right. I'll send you that link. Thanks a lot, everybody. Good luck out there.